Hello learners, welcome to Trick Science, teaching tricks through the power of science and games. Today we're going to examine one of my favorite video game characters of all time, Link. And more specifically, Link's rather simple yet enormously overpowered backflip and what it takes to actually backflip just like Link. In order to understand how Link and how backflips work in general, we're going to take a look at three key elements, namely height, rotation, and balance along with a few other essential things that will be sprinkled in the video. Starting with Link's height or jump, which seems like the most simple element to perform, but it can really psychologically flip you out sometimes. Anyways, when examining Link's height on his backflip, namely in his latest installment, Breath of the Wild, we first have to know his body height, which thanks to games like Ocarina of Time's pool meter stick, we can put Link's height at around 5 feet 6 inches or 1.7 meters tall. After converting Link's height to pixels, we can then calculate how high Link is moving his center of mass or his hips at the highest point of his jump. Doing these measurements and a bit of math, we can see that Link is moving his hips a staggering 1.8 meters or 5 feet 9 inches off the ground. That's an insane amount of height considering that Link is on a dead floor, meaning there's no springs in the ground like most gymnastics facilities have to help him gain more height. And he's doing it from standing with no cartwheel or round off to propel him into his backflip. Acrobats that can do standing double backflips get around 0.93 meters off the ground. Link is easily doubling that. You could argue that Link is getting more height because he's taller than most professional male acrobats, but remember, Link's only 5 feet 6 inches tall, with the average height of most professional male acrobats being 5 feet 4 inches to 5 feet 7 inches. So way to go Link, you're well on your way to golden glory. But why is all this height stuff so important, you ask? Good question! You see, height is all about time. The more height you get, the more time you have to complete your backflip or even harder tricks like a double backflip. It's like going on vacation with $1,000 in your pocket versus $100,000 more time affords you the opportunity to buy or do more complex things while you're in the air. All this extra time Link has explains why Link is able to draw his sword on fighting enemies mid-flip. The dude literally has so much time to kill that he can draw his sword, spot his target, and prepare to strike. Moving on to a very empowering element, we're going to take a look at the speed Link is rotating at during his backflip. You could also say the amount of torque his legs and torso are generating to spin his green cap a full 360 degrees before he slashes up some boblikins, moblins, or whatever. Man, that thing was terrifying the first time I saw it. I couldn't do a swan dive off that mountain after collecting those shock arrows quick enough. Now, when looking at Link's rotation, we really need to calculate Link's angular velocity, which is basically the speed he's rotating at to get his feet back to the ground the moment he takes off. In order to do this, we need to know exactly how much time it takes Link to touch the ground again after he's jumped. We can see that due to Link's enormous jump power, it takes him a whopping... 0.2 seconds?! Oh, just let me lay down for a second, totally not fantasizing about being a 5'6 elf man with the power of a top-of-the-line sports car. Anyways, after doing some equations and conversions, we can find Link's angular velocity to be 300 revolutions per minute or 1,800 degrees per second. This is over twice the speed of gymnasts doing double backflips who were recorded at having an angular velocity around 138 revolutions per minute or 820 degrees per second. So how can you achieve this lightning fast rotation that Link has? Well, it's important to look at the factors that actually generate the torque necessary to rotate our bodies, or namely our hips, around. These factors simply being our legs and torso. You see, the faster you can kick both your legs not just up, but around and back to the floor in a full 360 degrees while doing the same with your torso, the quicker you'll make it around. I know, maybe not mind-exploding stuff, but we can often forget to whip a leg or our torso around when doing a flip, especially if we're doing a trick that requires us to focus moving different body parts at different times. Like if we do a swing backflip that requires our legs to take into the air and then begin rotating at separate times 
times instead of in unison, so I think it's good to mention. While Link's angular velocity is blazing fast, the real important thing to note is seeing how much of his flip he's made it through by the time he reaches his max height or halfway point. The man is pretty much done with nearly three-fourths or rather 240 degrees of his flip by this point. This matters because generally most people do 180 degrees of rotation on their way up and another 180 on their way down. The more degrees of rotation you can get past in the first half of your flip, then the more rotation or even twist you can cover in the second half. So all those acrobats doing double backflips have to have at least a timing of 360 degrees of rotation on their way up and another 360 60 degrees on their way down just to land the darn thing. You could say that rotation is the more important, if not the most important element, due to the fact that you can have a low amount of height, but a high angular velocity so you still land the backflip. This is with one very important exception and the last secret for how to have a backflip on par with Link's. Balance. Balance is vitally important and you could say the first building block to being able to do a decent backflip. Cause if your balance is off, everything else is affected. We can't explain balance as how well your center of gravity is being pushed in whatever direction you want to go in rather than any other direction. Typically on something like a backflip, it's easier to land when you go straight up, thus landing on the same point that you jumped from, maximizing the height or time you get in the air. Examining Link's balance and direction he's pushing it, we can see that from measuring the angle of his body on his standing takeoff that he is leaning his center of gravity back at 42 degrees, which is causing him to travel over eight and a half feet backwards. No, 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 no. You know what? I take it back. Link, that's the most horrible balance control I've ever seen. Go back to Twilight Princess and get some more hardcore training from Ocarina of Time, Link. It's actually pretty expected that Link would want to lean back his center of gravity so he clears a decent amount of distance. Sacrificing his height, sure, but also making sure that he's dodging whatever sword or club is being swung at him. So the lesson here is that yes, you can jump backwards and clear some much needed space. Just know that you are sacrificing your time in the air and more importantly, you want to be able to control your balance or center of gravity so that you do jump in a direction that gives you as much time as you need based on how much angular velocity you can actually achieve. Cause you don't want to run out of time before you can get back to your feet just because you jumped at too low of an angle for your angular velocity. Balance. Saving lives one controlled jump at a time. Ah, <sighs> with all this height, rotation, and balance talk being thrown around, there is just one very important factor pertaining to Link that we haven't covered yet. All that weight that Link is hauling around with him and the power that he clearly has to do backflips with it. Most of us do cartwheels in our bare feet or maybe shoes, but not Link. This guy is literally carrying around more weight than a space shuttle filled with nothing but bags of sand. Okay, maybe not quite that much, but still, looking at Link's clothes alone, which in most if not all games consists of a green sleeve tunic or surcoat, lightweight leather armor, and then a gamson or padded armor, typically made from anywhere between 18 to 30 layers of cotton, linen, or wool. So knowing Link's height, the average weight of these items, and the results of some dubious research, with really no decisive results for all of his clothing items. Sorry. We can still estimate that Link's clothes weigh in the range of one to two pounds. His lightweight leather armor weighing around nine to 10 pounds. His leather boots, since most shoes back in the day were made out of leather, weigh anywhere from two to five pounds. And his gamson weighs four to seven pounds, which I'm guessing that Link is wearing a lighter weight gamson since he wears it underneath his armor. And since Link doesn't look like a puffed up spring chicken, it probably doesn't have a high amount of layers like gamson that were worn as a sole piece of armor in the 13th to 15th century. So far, we can estimate that Link's clothes weigh around 16 to 21 pounds. Then, there's the Master Sword. We can for real life purposes, cause that's totally what Zelda is like. Put the Master Sword around the weight of most one-handed swords, which never would weigh typically more than four to seven pounds, and that's quite honestly on the heavier side. If we estimate that Link's Hylian shield, like most shields, has a wood backing and isn't made out of straight up metal like it has been in some Zelda iterations, then his Hylian's shield weighs about 20 pounds, giving Link a total weight of 40 to 48 pounds. Not to to mention all that other weight that he's hauling around with him. 
So get into that gym and start doing those deadlifts, squats, and what else have you so you too can be a fast-flipping ninja while carrying an ungodly amount of weight just like Link. Seriously though, the more sheer power you can generate through muscle, the less skill you actually need in order to do the flip. You can totally land farther away from your starting position, no problem, as long as you can generate enough power resulting in more height to make up for any lack of skill and really control at directing that power. But let's be real, I say lack of skill, but landing a move exactly where you want is hard, and most of everyone will move around with some balance inconsistencies as they're throwing off tricks like Link launching arrows at one of those weird octopus things with a chest on their heads. Man, I hate those weird octopus things with the chests on their heads. Getting more and more skill and efficiency at directing your power into your desired direction and rotation is kind of the name of the game. Having more and more power to go along with that skill just makes for an incredible combination where you too can backflip with as much height, speed, and balance as Link. I hope this video helped you understand a bit more of what's going on with Link's amazing backflip and just backflips in general. Please feel free to post comments in the comment section below whether it's about these complicated movements or just to talk about games. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.